we're going to move to the approval of the minutes. I move we approve the minutes in the last I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It was a second. I was here. <laughs> Any public open to public comments? Any members of the public wish to speak? Any I think members? everybody here is part of the agenda. That's okay. Next one. All right. Uh, so right. the items for discussion: hangar mural project, and we have our we, finalists in here. We have all three of our finalists in house. Um, just to bring the airport commission up to speed, we've got 10 minute interviews. Uh, they've got 10 minutes to present uh, uh, however they want to use them. Q&A is kind of unlimited after that. So if you have questions, uh, we, we've left that open ended. Um, and then after that, hopefully we discuss or you guys discuss and, and pick somebody and we'll work on a future contract. But first up is Layton. And I will. Sure, I got it. Judy, can you see that? Okay. Sure. Right, right. Yeah, there we go. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. There you go. Well, you want a mouse? Do you yeah, want a keyboard or do you want books? Now it's going to be perfect. There you that's go. awesome. Well, thanks. Scroll. Yeah. Okay. You might need the keyboard, actually. Cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Leighton Scarborough. I am an artist and muralist from Northern Virginia. Uh, I got my Bachelor of Fine Arts and Illustration in, uh, from Utah Valley University uh, in 2020. And I've been freelancing as an illustrator for about seven years and started doing murals about four years ago. I did my first mural in Utah, and then ever since I've been doing them around the state of Virginia. Um, a lot of my work is kind of historical. I'm really into doing history. So when this opportunity came up, I was super excited about getting to learn more about this area. Um, my primary job is as a children's book author and illustrator. And then just to kind of challenge myself is when I started doing murals. Um, so my uh, aviation background, I was I grew up kind of surrounded by aviation. Um, my dad, my parents met in the Air Force. And then my dad went on to be a air traffic controller for the FAA for 32 years. And during that time, he has a private pilot's license. And so a lot of time has been spent flying, being at airports, uh, just enjoying our time in the clouds. And then uh, uh, being in Northern Virginia, we're really close to all the uh, Smithsonian museums. So a lot of time has been spent going to the Air and Space Museum and just like being surrounded by aviation history. So, so my design uh, basically focuses on the airmail history of Iowa City Airport. Um, let's see. The uh, design, I really want to just immediately welcome people uh, to Iowa City and then kind of get people to have a lot of questions. And then that in turn makes people want to Google it, learn more about the area. So I want people to go, why is there a pig in the middle of the piece? Who are these people? And then that forces people to start uh, researching. So starting on the left, oh, starting on the left, uh, we start off with uh, vintage like vintage air posters, uh, traveling over into mail. Uh, so some of the posters, like one left kind of pays homage to the fact that this started as a farm uh, and like way back when. Uh, and then each piece of mail uh, is addressed to somebody of historical significance for Iowa City. Uh, so we got people like Paul, Paul Shaw, uh, Walter Smith, um, Thomas Baldwin. And then moving on, so this is kind of like my, like these are my reference kind of thing. So like this is what the mail looked like for Iowa City specifically. Um, some of those vintage posters. 
moving on. Uh, then this is a detailed shot of the middle. Um, starting on the left, we've got Captain Thomas Baldwin, uh, who piloted the Red Devil aircraft in 1910. He drew crowds of people to come see the first uh, pilot, like the first uh, airplane fly uh, in Iowa City, and was just a huge pioneer for uh, air travel at the time. Uh, in the middle, we have Walter Smith. Um, he is piloting the Curtis JN 4D, which is uh, the most commonly used airmail service plane uh, in the 1920s. Uh, he flew the uh, return trip of the first airmail flight uh, from Omaha to uh, Chicago. And the first piece of airmail was a piglet, a uh, 10 pound piglet. And uh, so I was like, there's there's no way I can't include that. That's fantastic. And I thought that was uh, an amazing piece of history for this area. Um, I learned that uh, Walter uh, died a few months uh, after his flight and that the uh, air play, airport was uh, named Smithfield, I believe, uh, in honor of him. Uh, to the right of him is Jack Knight, who flew the first overnight transcontinental flight in 1921. Um, he made an emergency landing at Iowa City Airport in the blizzard, guided only by railroad flares. And it just kind of signified how important the placement of Iowa City Airport is uh, in the grand scheme of air mail and air travel and scattered around uh, Jack Knight are these uh, vintage uh, stamps and each one has the Curtis uh, Jenny uh, prop on it. And that was kind of the common, actually is was the common um, stamp of the time. And then the, uh, the greeting is just kind of like paying homage to those old like vintage postcards. Uh, and it's just kind of simple, easy. You can read it because it's that red on blue. You can read it from a distance and it's, uh, easy to read. And then this is kind of like some mock-ups of what it could look like um, on the hangar itself. Another one. Um, but yeah, so overall, I uh, just wanted something to immediately welcome people to the area and tell them that like there's a lot of history here and that you're here now and you are too a part of that history. Um, yeah, I, I've just I've had a blast getting time to research this area. I'm not from here, obviously. Uh, I've got family that lives here, and so I got to go around Iowa City today, and I was just blown away by one. The art around here is amazing, and just uh, the area is super cool. But uh, it's been so fun to come talk to you guys. Thank you. Thanks. So, do we ask questions now? Yeah. Um, any, if you look at the hangar and kind of look at. I did. Doors, uh, any concern about like the doors and hinges and gaps and things like that? No, um, I think it's just one of those things where like I've never painted on metal before. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just one of those things that I would just learn as I go. Okay. Um, but no, I didn't see, I, I looked as close as I could get, but um, I didn't see any major things. I think the one thing I have to do with my design is kind of figure out where the door placement is. Because mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't something I thought about originally. And then we pulled up and I was like, I got to think about the doors. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm pretty sure that nothing of significance is going to be covered by a door. Um, but that, I think that'd be the only concern. You painted mostly in brick and wood before? Yes, yeah. Um, brick, brick uh, stucco, and asphalt more recently. And asphalt, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we're starting to see those on the streets in yeah. town, too. So. It's, uh, it's different. Mm -hmm. Okay. As a non-artist, I'm just curious, could you describe your process, how you actually put the image? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so I did this on, a, I did it digitally on an app called Procreate on my iPad. And uh, so, I, you know, I picked up photo references from all over the place and just kind of started sketching. I mean, how do you actually put that on the building? Oh, yeah. So um, so my process, I, I use a projector. Yeah. I So I'll take my sketch for these bigger things. I'll project my sketch up onto the surface, mm -hmm. do a like an outline, mm -hmm. um, and then just go from there. Go from there. Yeah, it definitely cuts down on the, on the time. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So you don't have to paint a grid. Or exactly. Something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are those are brutal. <laughs> yes, way back in high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was never fun. Right, great. I don't have any other questions. A uh, great concept. I, I think yeah. I really appreciated you going the extra effort and, and providing this in the proposal. Oh, thank you. I, I think you caught the spirit of what we were looking for. Um, you know, we put some ideas out there, not sure what we get back. And yeah. we were hoping that uh, the artists that did respond uh, would, you know, kind of bring their own creative ideas to it. So we really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm going, to, I'm going to throw one out there for the commission's benefit because one of the things that we've been talking about here is specifically fundraising to help pay for mm -hmm. this project. Yeah. Um, and as part of that fundraising, things we had talked about or uh, bandied around was 
um, being able to have a specific, very limited, but a specific tier of donations where they could affect some of the elements in, in that product. Yeah. Um, do you see any issues with something like that happening? Not at all. Okay. I think no. the concept originally was around, you know, having a like a historic airplane or a family airplane. I think one of the challenges we ran into, though, was the, the, the quid pro quo that came with that and how it wouldn't qualify as a donation. Yeah, there, there's some things we, we can still, yeah. there, there's things we can do to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Um it, like if it's just a personal thing, it's a lot easier. Yeah. But if somebody wants to put a corporate logo on there, it becomes much more difficult. Right. And so and an example where... could be if someone had, a, you know, a grandfather that had like a you know 1940s Bonanza or something and they wanted to donate a lot, but they wanted to have his grandfather's airplane on the side. I mean, it, the ability to incorporate that may be something that uh, comes up. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I think, no, I think that'd be great. I think there's, I think there's a lot of spaces that uh, things can move around. Okay. And definitely be added. Okay. okay. Great. Yeah. That's appreciate it. Thanks. Judy has something. Is it in the... uh, Judy, the Judy has asked what the plan is to like if if we do get those donor conversations going, how are we going to arrange meetings? Um, if are you planning on staying in town through the process? Yes. Or, yeah. Okay. yeah. Question back here. Um, so I've been flying your uh, yeah. And one of the big conversations in aviation today has to do with um, aviation becoming more diversified and gender balanced. Right now, only 7% of women are pilots in the country, and only 4% are airline pilots. Um, so, this is a great mural, you know, but it's a very very limited snapshot in time for the IOC year. Definitely. And I guess as somebody who is in aviation and who's brought a national air race to Iowa City twice now, um, I, I personally hope that the final product that is put up for Miro will be more inclusive. Okay. And, and more representative beyond something in 1920. Yeah. Or prior to 1920. Um, so that's, I just want to make that comment. That's an open comment, not just to you, but all of the artists too. Yeah, and that's great. I appreciate that too. Yeah, thank you. Yep. And I love history. Don't get me wrong. I love history. <laughs> so I, I, well, you know, I a lot, lot of white history. A lot of white men up there. White right? men. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't say yeah. that. No, but but <laughs> I will. I mean, <laughs> but I, I, the point taken. I mean, in, in recent history with the, uh, the the air races you brought to town. I mean, those right. were. Um, and there was a University of Iowa student who came a lot. I looked during World War II. Yep. From journalism. Oh, wow. And there are seven or eight lot pilots, not just from the Iowa City area, but elsewhere. But this one in particular uh, was from Iowa City. And I think one of the challenges we would have is getting everything into one mural. We might have to talk about more than one. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of history here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Thank All right. Any other Thank else? Thank you. Any Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Judy. Guys. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. yours. Hi. Um, okay. yes. I just want to make sure the screen sharing is back. Pause. Yes. Come on. There we go. Okay. Judy, good. You can see that. Click back and forth the arrows on the keyboard. Uh, she can see it. She's nodding her head. Okay. My keyboard is lagged, but. Left click will advance. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jenna Brownlee. I am a full-time painter and muralist from Des Moines. 
Um, I have my BFA in graphic design from the University of Iowa. So I have a deep love for Iowa City and I come back here every year since my younger years. Um, I have 10 years of experience in graphic design, which has served me well with client relations and um, adhering to brand identity and bringing clients visions and objectives to life and taking constructive criticism and applying it to problem solving through design. Um, and I'm represented by Liz Legit Gallery and Design in Des Moines, and I offer commissions, and I've been painting murals since 2017. <laughs> so I need to demonstrate that art is a powerful and integral and experiential tool that can unify and beautify and energize our communities. And um, a lot of my work is inspired by nature with uplifting themes of vibrant colors and um, botanicals and hand lettering. And my mission as an artist is simply to make people happy through art and share the joy that it brings me. So this is my CV and we do not need to go through it, but I just wanted to show my experience. So since 2017, I painted over 40 murals throughout 21 communities in Iowa. So I have two concepts to share today. And before we jump into the design, I'll also show relevant previous works of mine. Um, so that you can see how the design might translate to a wall um, once it's painted. So the first concept is um, timeline, taking flight to the future. So this design is bold, is vibrant, contemporary, with sharp, clean lines, has graphical, graphical elements, and is functional. So here are a few other designs that might have a similar style and approach. So really attention-grabbing, vibrant, high-contrasting colors, and it draws the viewer in from afar. And it makes a statement because it has high vis visibility from afar. Um, so these examples also show how lettering could be a functional piece of the art to help with storytelling. So here is concept number one. And since it's so long, I've broken it up into sections over on the left so that you can see as we talk through it. So a collage of attention grabbing contemporary graphical elements and vibrant colored layered with iconic imagery and layering lettering to visually tell the story and timeline of the airport's rich history milestones and where it's headed. So including you can see up close um, there are dates highlighting the milestones throughout the history of the airport in a very bright and vibrant contemporary way. So 1881 with the purchase of Stover's farmland, 1910 Thomas Baldwin's Red Devil first flight in Iowa City, 1920 comes through here, um, the beginning of transcontinental airmail with the first shipment of the piglet, which was just too good to pass up and not include it. Um, 1927, Boeing joins the airport and opening of the United Hangar. And then 39 and 44 is a World War II. So this really hits all of the milestones throughout history. Um, Naval aviation pilot training and partnership with the University of Iowa Engineering Department and the start of the Airport Commission, and which was known as the golden area at the golden era at the time. Um, 1953, the airport terminal opens. 59, Olympic like Airlines joins the airport. 60 to 67, EK Jones leadership. And then today, celebrating 100 years and taking flight to the future. So clean, sharp graphical elements um, juxtapositioned with blended strokes. So some of these historical figures that are marked here would have a more painterly approach. So there'd be a nice contrast of styles. So from far, it's striking, bold, um, and up close, it further tells the story of the history timeline of the airport as a functional piece of art. <laughs> I'm talking pretty fast because I want to get through two concepts. Um, so this concept is different. Um, and while the first one is a little bit more unexpected from what you shared with the reference images in the creative brief, this one would probably align a little more closely with that. So it's painterly, authentic, feels um, authentic to Iowa and the airport, like it's part of the existing landscape and space and has an aspirational feel. So here are some um, other examples that have this type of approach, a collage approach. You can see there's more paint strokes. It's not that sharp geographical look, more painterly, a little bit more realistic. And um, take a look to this, as you know, the landscape, the sun, the sky, the clouds, and the big flowers in the foreground as you look to the next concept. I keep leaning in front of me. <laughs> um, so this is flights through time, painterly, authentic, and aspirational. Uh, a bursting sunrise creates an homage to the era of planes used to mark milestones and airports history throughout time. Alongside historical figures framed by Iowa's iconic landscape, 
and the state flower, which is the Iowa Prairie Rose, um, to represent growth and resilience. So Thomas Baldwin, Jack Knight, the Red Devil, the Piglet, Boeing plane, Ozark plane, Navy pilots, restored Air Force plane, current planes flown today. So as you come and spread out, it goes from history and then expands out to the planes that are used in modern time. Um, so this design is a little bit more traditional, realistic, um, and the upward and outward composition of the planes flying over an aspirational feel, symbolizing how the airport has evolved to what it is to achieve today. So just to note, this is just a sketch. So these are just photos used for placement and composition, but of course everything would be painted. And I would love to collaborate on what specific type of elements to be included so that it's factual and representational, like certain kind of planes that you'd like to note or showcase. Um, and oh, yeah, um, both designs have a strong focus on history, but either design has a lot of open flexibility to rooms for alterations, additions, um, specific customizations, open to feedback and thoughts. And I would say my closing remarks are, I think it's fantastic that you're investing in the airport in this way through mm -hmm. art. And public art is such a gift because not everyone has access to art in their life or knows what art can do for your mind and your spirit. And public art is accessible to everyone. And so I think that as you're reviewing the concepts, think about what you want the viewer to experience and feel when they witness this piece so that it's a meaningful piece of art for them and for you. And that's it, thank you. I'll ask the same question, any concerns about the building or you know, doors, things like that, that uh, jumps out at you? No. And kind of a similar thing, you you make it work. Yeah. And especially on a piece this grand, mm -hmm. and depending on what the design is, those things in terms of process, no, you you make it work. But in terms of in terms of viewing, those things are really masked and hidden by the artwork. So mm -hmm. I yeah. One thing to consider is the uh, doors, uh, mm -hmm. some doors are open like during the day. Okay. So, you know, when uh, customer or sorry, when when tenants are here and they're using planes, there might be one out of six doors open and mm -hmm. it might stay open for several hours. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for continuity or you know particular elements, you might think about that as you're laying it out. Yeah, great. You don't want to have a word spelled and when it opens up, it, it spells something. <laughs> that's a very great point. One of those things to integrate into the artwork as you're working through the process. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, all part of the process. <laughs> and then uh, as far as uh, uh, material, you've painted on metal before then? I've this... painted on metal. I've painted on just about everything okay. else. Uh, brick and wood and stucco and drywall, um, plexiglass. Any particular challenges with metal over the other medias you've worked with? I would say it's painted, right? Yes. Painted metal. So if it's painted, it just needs something for the paint to cling to and cure to. So if it's already primed, then it shouldn't be an issue. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions for me? Probably the same comment, I think, to all the artists. Just, you know, if we're working through the concepts and the conclusion would be uh, something we want to maybe be a little more mindful of. It'd be a great yeah. opportunity. Thank you so much. Judy, you have... What, what is the up and wants? Okay. That's a good question. Again, that's a general question. Yeah. Um, well, luckily we don't have, you know, California sun here blazing down, um, but depending on what kind of paint you use, I use a mix of house paint, I use Bear Marquee and Nova Color, and I've had great experiences with both. And the lifespan of your mural is really about, I would say about the lifespan of a house paint. Um, it really should last as, as I mean, as you guys, if you have anything else to add, please do. But um, if the structure of the surface is sound, then your mural should last for years and years. And um, out of the pieces that I've done, I have never varnished or anything an exterior mural. What's so an exterior latex type paint that you use? Um, Nova Color is an artist paint, and it's rich in pigment and low in chemicals. And then Bare is, yeah, it's an exterior satin enamel paint. Yeah. And both are great quality. And it kind of, it just kind of depends on how you're using the paint. I tend to use artist paint more for details and blending, and I use house paint for washes and fluff of color. 
right. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now I can scroll. Hey everyone, thanks for having me. My name is Greg Gossel. Um, I got my degree in graphic design as well, actually, in, in uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, 2005. I've been doing gallery work since about 2007. I did my first mural in 2009, and I've been really busy with murals probably the last six or seven years. <clears throat> been kind of my main focus. Um, I'm based in Wisconsin right now, about four hours north here. So, um, yeah, I'll give you a quick rundown on, on what I got going here. Uh, should advance. Oh, scroll. <laughs> um, <clears throat> in general, these concepts, uh, um, I kind of look at the project as with that panoramic view as like an evolution, past, present, and future of the airport. Um, <clears throat> celebrating the airport, the city, and the state. Um, being able to intermingle all those elements into compositions. So first one, um, <clears throat> I did a similar process here since it's such a wide piece, I broke into three different sections. I have multiple concepts here. I kind of view these as graphic packages where things can be swapped out in a collaborative effort with, with everyone here, the airport and the community, engaging everyone to, to be able to pick and choose what elements um, might be ideal to the piece. But in general, um, kind of referencing the agricultural history of the airport space here itself with the dairy farm and then how that transitioned through history. You have some of the iconic figures, um, but that's also room to insert contemporary elements throughout. <clears throat> so, for each concept, you'll see kind of a evolution throughout. Um, in general, um, I like to work dynamic, bold, heavily layered, be able to incorporate a lot of elements, even if there's bits that are coming through behind or more, you know, of the Hawkeye logo coming through. It's not necessarily in your face, but there's elements that are uh, you find as you go. <clears throat> but at the same time, thinking about how you're going to see it, particularly from the road. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's got to be something that you can drive by and that'll pop. Um, so I'm kind of trying to split the difference of content, but also simplicity. Um, so that's concept A. You can kind of get a feel for how that'll look. <clears throat> concept B, again, couldn't resist the pig either. Um, <laughs> So how I generally work with these sorts of projects is I set out a wide variety <laughs> of concepts and then through a collaborative effort, it might be, we really like these four elements from concept B, these elements from concept C, and can we add, you know, this new element to it or the colors. So I'm kind of putting out a lot of options here that can slowly be narrowed down and refined to that final piece. Um, so there's concept B. Whoops. And it'll be there. I mean, the nice thing too with the composition with the doors is <clears throat> there's kind of already a collage element to it. So to have doors shifting, there's not necessarily one focal image that's going to be thrown off if the door is open or you know any of those options. Concept C, again, um, kind of intermingling some of those agricultural roots, um, like Barnside Quilt, uh, try to think about <clears throat> graphics that um, are less overt but could add some interesting visual flair to the piece. Um, 
even some of the shapes and the architecture in this building, I think, could be interesting additions. Um, the airmail elements, some of the history. There's views at concept D. This one I pivoted a little bit, just incorporating some of the branding mm -hmm. um, and some of the more literal history. Um, that would be an option as well. Um, you could see the color palette shifted here to a more on-brand palette. If that's the direction we wanted to go. Um, again, I think some of this could be incorporated into one of the other concepts, um, but I just tried to whoop, scroll around. That might look. Um, and then the final one, concept E, I do incorporate a variety of type into different projects. So that's something that's an option too, if there's significant dates or, you know, simply Iowa City Municipal Airport, Iowa City Airport, there's different ways that that, that can be approached. Um, again, just kind of a, a different way to, you know, attack the same visual problem here. We have uh, the state bird and six, there, there's interesting elements that can be incorporated in. Um, not have it be just aviation elements, kind of have things weed together. And there's a views that. And then lastly, I just did a variation on this final concept. The color palette could shift to more dual tones. Um, again, if it wanted to be a, a branded in, in the blues or this, I use kind of that Hawkeye sort of palette. <laughs> um, but this is just an example how any of these concepts could transition color palette lines. Mm -hmm. So try to leave a lot of different options open. Um, so those are the concepts. And then I included just um, with a lot of projects I've done, I mean, I've had the opportunity to travel all over the country and abroad and whenever I'm in a community, I try to engage with that community while I'm, I'm here working on site as much as possible. Um, that's a mural I did in Milwaukee there. Um, So whether that engagement is, um, I know you've done movie nights here and picnics, things like that it could be cool while I'm actually creating a mural. Obviously you're not gonna do a movie during the day, but um, food trucks, I've done things where um, had community members help with some of the mural. Again, logistically, that might not be an option here, but also made like coloring sheets for kids that accompany the, the mural itself or just different creative ideas is to engage um, with the community. So, so just kind of samples um, of the print work or of murals that could be like collectible or limited edition prints that go with the piece itself, um, social media campaigns, just ideas there. So here's just kind of a quick rundown of some previous pieces I've done. Um, U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Um, this is Kind of a similar size piece on the facade of um, Biker Forum in Milwaukee. Uh, a concave ceiling piece in Japan was kind of a crazy project. Um, I did that wall in Miami, um, Minneapolis, another Milwaukee piece. Uh, I've done a fair amount of work with sports teams. This is kind of a niche that I've gotten into some more work in Minneapolis, um, some series uh, for the Packers at Lambeau Field. Detroit Pistons, that one's there in San Francisco. Just kind of showing the range of, of different things I've done. Um, those concepts, while they're rough right now, <laughs> once every all the content is finished, that's when I kind of refine it and really nail everything down for the final piece. So, um, run down with some samples. Texas. Um, this is my largest piece to date. This is here in Milwaukee. I did two summers ago. Um, 10,000 square feet, that's kind of a crazy one. Um, and then that's just links to, to things there. It's fantastic, yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I like the concept of community involvement. That's one of our struggles we have with the community is mm -hmm. they sort of view us as the playground of the rich, you know, and uh, we like to pull them in. So, yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting if there was a way to manage something like that. I we usually do it involve the community when you go to a new. Uh, usually, I work with um, 
the team members who are commissioning the piece um, to kind of come up with ideas in advance of, of when I'm actually going to be on site painting um, to schedule events uh, leading up to or, you know, over that span while I'm on site, you know, a project like this probably seven to 10 days, something like that. So be able to have that window schedule things along that time. So. Thank you. I think I was going to add it again. This goes for all the artists. So make sure you look at the building at night. There is some lighting on it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not uniform. So, you know, as you're thinking through elements, um, you might take into account what it looks like at night, mm -hmm. what people would see from the street. Cool. All right. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And I, I like that in one of your um, samples. You have the inclusion, there's an aviator. Yeah, I mean, I think the nice thing with um, the style of composition is you're able to incorporate a lot of different elements. Um, speaking back to that inclusion mm -hmm. university, um, being able to have a lot that you can also um, take in at once from kind of quickly driving by. So, thank you. Cool. Yeah, thanks. thanks, everybody. Judy, do you have anything? And she broke. Yeah. She's back. Okay, there we go. Do you have anything, Judy, for us? <laughs> I know it's frustrating. Uh -uh. It, she has been, I think. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> she think, uh, Did he see the lines in the middle and the doors with all of his detail? Oh, the corrugation on the side of the buildings is probably a, a general question for all the artists. It, you know, that it's not a flat surface. I don't know if there's any concerns. Just for all the artists, there's corrugation inside of the building. Yeah, 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 that's not a problem. Um, cool thing about that is I found that murals kind of camouflage all that. Yeah, and, you know, I've actually painted over duct work and all that. And for me, I you know, was, you know, so. Were you able to hear that, Judy? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, um, that's your three artists. Uh, good luck, because those are all impressive. <laughs> well, and yeah, if, I was going to say that, number one, it was really difficult to winnow down. We had a lot of good support, a lot of fantastic applicants, a lot of talent. Uh, it, it really tremendously exceeded our expectations on this. So thank you for those who invited here. Thank you for the concepts you put together. It's going to be a uh, I think a tough, uh, tough choice for us. Uh, what are we end up doing here? So, um, but thank you. Um, from here, um, do we discuss this in open session? Do we... Yeah, it's pretty much an open session conversation. So, um, I, I'd <laughs> um, like, I'd I know like, it's I know it's difficult yeah, because I'd, of I'd the nature like to, of. I'd like to, because we just saw the, the the concepts. I'd like to defer this if it's possible. We can maybe have a special meeting. Uh, maybe two weeks out. Is that okay? Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. I mean, that's if that's what the commission wants to do, we'll make that work. That would be what I my proposal. I would move that we uh, defer discussion on this topic for a special meeting in about two weeks. Yeah, I think that's in would, favor. Yeah, I'm 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 in favor of that. Second. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. Okay. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Judy. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. At the very least, I can look over the materials and. And about it. perhaps if some of us have additional questions we want to put to the mm -hmm. artists, we can do that in the meantime. We yeah. do that through you, Mike. Right? Yeah, we can funnel that. Um, 
All right. Well, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting and hang out. Otherwise, uh, we're going to move on with the agenda, I guess. <laughs> It'll be a little more boring from here. Yeah. <laughs> for those out of town, there's some great breweries. Uh, oh, yeah. For yourself. But uh, well, you. definitely do appreciate everybody's effort, everybody being here tonight, because I know travel arrangements can be a little insane. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you. And We'll be in touch. Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Ready. We are moving to airport strategic planning. Next item on the agenda. Yeah, what a tough act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to compare. It's yeah. not quite as visual. You know, before this strategic planning was the most exciting thing we did. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I saw the competition, so I have no high expectations for this scheme. Riveting. So. Thanks, Mark. Which one goes forward? Uh, if you left click, you should be able to okay. progress. Okay, we'll just stay there. <laughs> so um, this evening, our objective is really to check in with the mission and vision statement and then begin to talk about goals. So um, we're really, you know, when Jeff and I were here, we talked about strategic planning is where are we now? Where do we want to be in five years? That's the step that we're on right now. So first... When we initially set up this process, we talked about not changing the mission and vision statement. So I wanna just check in. It's always a good practice with strategic planning to check in with, um, with that decision. Oops. Okay. So here you have your current statements. I also sent these to you in advance. Just keeping in mind the purpose of a, a vision statement is to describe the long-term aspirations the ideal future state. And then the mission statement, I consider sort of an internally unifying, externally explanatory statement about what the organization does. And so this is what you have. We did redo these last five years ago but with the last plan. In fact, I think what we did last time is we flipped elements of the mission and vision statement. And this is what we came up with. So thoughts on, are you still all on the same page about not altering these or not having a deeper discussion with these as they stand? Do they continue to, does the vision statement continue to sort of state that aspirational ideal state? Does the mission statement continue to explain what the airport and the role of the airport is? They're not bad. I, the, the vision statement seems sort of vague to me. I just wonder, I mean, should we have a more bold vision rather than just stating that we support the goals of the community? That was a kind of a time specific sort of thing that we wanted to, to include at that time. Mm -hmm. um, how about the, the part about the community asset that contributes to economic vitality and evokes community pride? I mean, you feel okay about that? It's, I guess maybe the issue is the way it's worded, it's not forward looking. It says what it is, not what we, are looking for in the future. I do it's generally I state these in uh, present, present tense day. to because you're aspiring to be that, you know, like waking up every day and saying, you know, I'm tough, I'm, you know, brilliant, you know, this sort of pump well, your up. You could say thing. instead of supports, you could say seeks to support this strategic goals or, uh, you know, exists to support the strategic goals, that kind of thing. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's just it's just the way it, it reads to me, just sort of wishy washy. Other thoughts. I thought it was pretty good. It's it's a difficult thing to do. 
um, and you're trying to get that balance of, um, you know, what we want to be that is inspiring enough, but not overly prescriptive. Um, I, <laughs> I guess from, from my point of view, I'm comfortable with it, yeah, but certainly yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, just it, it didn't inspire us, I guess, the way. We would like it to be a little bit more inspirational. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I would say, I will frame it in supports the strategic goals. When we had strategic planning last time for the airport, it was at the same, it was around the same time that the city had just adopted. And so there was, it was an impor important to the commission to make that alignment with the city's strategic plan. Um, I don't know if that is of concern to this group as much. Not that, you know, not that you have to take it out or, or, but I'm no, giving that some context. I think we certainly do want to do that. I mean, okay. The economic, the uh, energy conservation, you know, that we're hoping to mm -hmm. uh, start here. And that those those are goals of the community that we want to support. So, yeah. Thought, other thoughts? Did you? I mean, so you I was, you experienced it. I was so. on the commission when this was right. Mm -hmm. Just a general comment is that I think in general the vision statement is intended to be relatively global and not as defined. I guess is what you're looking for, Warren. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding of it. And the vision statement and everything that follows it is to get down into the nuts and bolts more. Yeah. So that's my only hope. Yeah, I just, I just and thought I that my vision should be more visionary. You know, I, that's that just the way yeah. I was thinking. When I was also part <laughs> at the tail end, but I was, I was part of it. And what I remember thinking was, yeah, you're not really supposed to be, you're not really supposed to be like wowed by the vision statement. It like it, it's, <laughs> okay no but, but but i get what you're saying i mean it is it is it's like yeah okay. like you know and then you move on to the the actual mission statement like why we're here and that's where you get into the things that are a little bit more exciting like the education healthcare cultural recreation stuff like that i, I mean, think it's direct enough for the average like the citizen who does happen to go out and look at this you know i think it provides, the vision statement provides kind of a direct statement that is understandable, I think, to the average reader that's not in aviation or not a part of the airport. And that's the benefit of it, I think, is that it really does tie it to the city. And I think that's what the residents want to see. Um, Although when you read, you know, what the residents said, I did read what it's, the it's, said. Yeah. That's pretty similar to what they said five yeah, years it's, ago. It's, it's, it's actually a little bit nicer, but maybe that was just because there were fewer comments. It's, yeah. it's kind of like teaching, though. I, I would always remind myself that the number of people who took the survey or had the opportunity to take the survey yeah. and didn't respond. Yeah. So I think you can't overemphasize the negative comments. I totally agree with that. No, but I, I bet. That's why I'm saying the vision statement, you know, isn't going to necessarily change anybody's minds. But but I do think the word integral was it was an important um, an important word to have in the vision statement. That it it is really important and part of the community. Yeah. It's not as you said earlier, the playground for the rich. It's it it is part of the community. It's a community asset. So Ms. could we put in one word before contributes, but substantial? What do others think? You can do anything you want. You're the, I, I mean, it's your. I'm not opposed, but I also don't want to embellish. Well, we just got this nice. Uh, we did, but yeah, and, and so I'm, I'm coming, I'm, I'm coming at your suggestion, open-minded. Mm -hmm. I'm very open to it, provided that that 24 million is actually substantial and not like, you know, coins between the cushions compared to what you know other areas bring in. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't want to oversell it because then we start losing. Well, and the other it thing becomes, is, it's not, it's not just economic vitality. We also have, you know, patient transport to the oh, yeah. hospital stuff. Yep. 
you could say substantially contributes to the region's vitality and evokes community pride. I'm okay with that. But yeah, I'm I'm not in favor of substantial. I think it sets expectations too high. But I do think that if we're going to look at vision statement, it has to be more than economic vitality and community pride. It has to be how is this benefiting the citizens uh, of Iowa City? You know, and again, I don't know what that wording is. Um, but you know, again, reading the, the the I'll say the survey is a bit of a guide to things opportunities uh, right. for improvement. Um, I think that there is um, some opportunity for you know for the for the broader community to feel like this airport has value to their life, and and I don't know that we see that in this. Well, in the mission statement, that's where you describe what you do and the impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to make some broader general statements in the vision statement that contributes to the um, region's vitality and evokes community pride, if you want to make that a more general I, statement I like and take that, out. I think it makes it stronger just getting rid of economic. Okay. Because it, it. Others? And Judy also comes to drop economic. Okay. I, I drop economic. I'd say region's vitality and evokes. And I think that's that's helpful because then it's, you're not being narrow. Right. It. It's Yeah, it's a broader more visionary yeah. vision statement. Yeah. Anything else? If, if we drop economic, I think my vote would be to lock it in and leave it as is. I think it's really, really, really important to say that we support the strategic goals of the city because okay. if you look at some of the comments, and I agree with Minetta's point, you don't want to lend too much weight to squeeze. No, don't overweight it. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's really important that we make sure that the, the vision statement aligns with the idea that we're not going off the reservation and doing our own thing, that we are still grounded in some, mm -hmm. some set of, you know, rules. Right. right. And some of the comments actually point to a perception that we're not aligned with some of those strategic goals, uh, whether it's, you know, carbon, you know, footprint right. or, or noise. And, you know, we are doing things like solar panels and LED lighting and, and really getting, you know, at least the operations of the airport to be carbon neutral. And there are other things that we could encourage through our partnership with Jet Air, you know, electric training airplanes, for example. I mean, um, that day will come, I think. Oh, it's, I mean, Hipistrol just got acquired by Textron and they've, and they've got the electric airplane. I know they have the European approval. Yeah. Well, and as we talk about strategies, I mean, I think, um, we oh, can think, think about. I think Judy's got a question. Sorry. I need to pay attention. Do we evoke pride? Well, I, think, I think it's a vision. We want to evoke pride. Uh, do you? If you, I mean, I'm not real keen to change it, but if you wanted to, you swap out the word contributes for benefits, an asset that benefits the region's economic vitality. Benefits right. the region's vitality. We're rid of economic. We got rid of it. We're thinking about taking out economic. Yeah, yeah, but instead of contributes to benefits. I mean, if I was looking for another word to put in there, do that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think what Judy's getting at though is is there's two aspects of it, right? One's vitality, and one's how how we feel about it. Um, one is what it does. The other is is you know the emotion. Is evokes community pride the right phrase? Mm -hmm. Is there another phrase? Um, you know, I think it's a good phrase. I think evoking community pride is, is good. Is there something I think that's the most aspirational part of the vision statement, quite mm -hmm. frankly, is, I mean, and I, I think that that was kind of, mm -hmm. if I can make some assumptions about where the commission was last time, is that's what they wanted to do, mm -hmm. is they wanted more positive comments, people to feel like we've got this cool airport. How about we do this? You wanted to put significantly contributes. What if we said meaningfully? Okay, I like that. Yeah. Now I'm getting my lawyer language on it. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 but I think you're right. I mean, what's and, the standard deviation for a significant? Movie? Right, significant has high expectations. <laughs> you know, what's, what's meaningful? Yeah. And I think the word economic, though, is important here because... One of the things you hear throughout the surveys is that we're sucking resources from the city. People don't realize we're actually driving resources into the city. So I think if you 
water it down and take out the word economic. We can use the opportunity to remind people that we are providing economic vitality. And I think that's an important aspect that the general public needs to hear. Could we? I think it's a double edged sword. I think, on the one hand, if you say economic, it sounds like, well, it's all about it's, business and something. It's, it's and money. It's so rich. Yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, if you don't put economic, <laughs> then you lose that opportunity to, to show that, hey, this is a net positive. And I think the story around the airport being self supporting and not taxpayer supported at this point, I mean, it, it has the backup of being taxpayer supported. But, you know, maybe in that mission statement, we, we maybe double down and say that. <clears throat> we want to be what we aspire to be as a self-supporting entity that does not rely on taxpayer funds. How about contributes to the regions? I'm thinking about putting on the mission statement instead of the vision. Oh, okay. But you'll get to be so. I mean, if you're defining self-supporting as taking no money from the city or the state or whatever, that that will never happen because the grants require commitment from the city or the state or whatever. Yeah. So I, I really think that. And there's no argument about taxpayer dollars because the state grant is taxpayer dollars. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been and on the, state commissions. So. <laughs> we, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We hear those yeah. kinds of things. How about just to rephrase the last part of that sentence? It contributes to the region's commerce, vitality, and pride. Commerce, that would then would say that again. Oh. It's an integral community asset that contributes to the region's commerce, vitality, and pride. Well, now I'm back to the word you wanted to use instead of contribute. What was that word again? Meaning Meaning benefits. No, no, benefits. Benefits. Um, commerce, vitality. So commerce takes care of economic. Vitality broadens it. Right. The activities. Activities, the health care benefits. Uh, I think I do like that. Assets that benefit the region's commerce, commerce comma, vitality, vitality, comma, and community pride. Or and just pride. Your community pride is fine. So, yeah. Probably community pride. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you have meaningful in there? No. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So what I have is integral community asset that benefits the region's commerce that contributes to the well no we said we benefits, said we benefits. Benefits, benefits the region's, the region's commerce comma comma vitality comma. and I'm an Oxford comma comma and yeah. community pride it's because that's the correct way to do it yes I and know. I'll die on that hill so. <laughs> yes and I will <laughs> please enjoy please you. include it in the double die on the hill um so are we okay with that I Maybe? like that a lot better Okay, so let me make sure asset that benefits the regions, commerce, comma, vitality, and community. This won't be the last time you see it. You'll see that revision. Think about it. And I have a question. Of course. Since you brought up the subject of diversity and inclusion. I agree with you, but I don't know that the vision statement's where we want to do it. Vitality could, could incorporate. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I vitality agree. needs diversity, personally. I, but yes, I see that. I just wanted to bring it yeah, up. No, it, yeah, no, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's a good point. I think we should, in our operations, strive for that. You know, that's not necessarily the major vision. Well, the, again, getting back to the, some of the survey results, um, I think there's a broader inclusiveness uh, yeah. theme there that if we, again, it is viewed right now as something that only benefits business or the rich. Yeah. Right? How can we make this an asset that is more uh, inclusively beneficial? Yep, to the community. Exactly. I think that should be one of our goals. Goals that we really work towards. Yeah. And, and again, I'm, 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 that's a broad umbrella and inclusive, right? I'm saying it's yeah. socioeconomic, it's gender, it's, um, you know, it's everything. Point being, if we're going to see this as an asset that benefits the community, we want to we want to broaden that benefit as inclusively as possible. Does that address your concern? Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> and I didn't hear a lot of comments about the mission statements. I'm good on that. Describes what you do, the impact. It's pretty close. Oh, cool. I think it's good. Okay. I'm going to keep us moving to keep you on track. So we'll revisit, we'll see those and you'll have a chance to go at those again. I got this online. What did you say, Lauren? Um, no, no. <laughs> Here, I'll get you there. Why did you drive? <laughs> I'm a perfectly capable driver, but it's not working. Okay, so these are the goals. I thought that this would be a good starting place. These are the goals in the current plan. You've seen those before, and they fall into. Okay, <laughs> just can't. I put these in those these broad categories, communication, funding, use infrastructure. And for my own sort of buckets, I put the master plan and infrastructure. So I'm gonna, starting, um, instead of kind of starting from whole cloth, I'm starting from these categories. Are these the general? Are these a good starting place Absolutely. for your goals? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that they're the only categories, but are they a good starting place? Mm -hmm. And we can go one. Thank you. Hit the so you can points. see that. So those are the buckets that I see. Totally agree. Any bucket missing? There's a good neighbor piece here that I don't know where we put that in. Um, Since we're trying to include the community, so collaboration on your first one, you also had communication and collaboration. I feel that it'd be a good one to include as well. That's in communication. Well, it's two yeah. things, right? It's only you're you're saying it's both, right? It's it's that how do you draw? How do we communicate and draw the community in? So, but also work in partnership with different agencies within the city. Mm -hmm. to do that. But if collaboration was something you wanted to stand on its own or something else, I mean, you could pull that out because that, that could have been sussed out of that first goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think communication and collaboration can be together in a common goal. I don't have a problem with that. But I think what... what Good neighbor. Yeah, what we're saying is let's not lose sight of that. And so is that a separate goal or is that with good use piece, or is- I think the use might be something, uh, maybe an addition to, I'll say increased use um, that somehow is also beneficial to the community or not not deterioris, or is it deleterious to the community. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, there was one survey responded that sent a link uh, to the noise charts. And, I didn't know those existed, to be honest. Yeah, and uh, I thought that was that was really interesting. Yeah. And you know, I'm again, I'm all the way up to City High, and I can hear those whatever it is. I don't see albatrosses or something yeah. else. Yeah. Um, I think we've got an issue, sure. um, and I, I don't think we're doing us as the commission. I don't think we're doing ourselves any favors by maybe not addressing it because I think it can continue to grow as a frustration within the community. So that use piece, I think, has to be tempered. There has to be the use mm -hmm. combined with ways that um, at the same time, we're also improving the quality of life for the community. And that could, could include some noise abatement, noise abatement or... Um, yeah, how about optimize use instead of increase use? Mm -hmm. Optimize is good. Um, but I think there's something around the use that uh, if, if it's used without any care for the consequences, I think that could end up creating some friction with this with the residents of the city. So that that has to balance something. Is what I'm sure. Okay. So you suggested the word optimize mm -hmm. use of the airport for aviation. 
Um, I mean, do you want to, I mean, the next question I naturally would ask if, if these are the buckets and let's just go forward. If these are the buckets, what do you want to do with the buckets? Are, are they similar goal statements? Are they different goal statements? I mean, communication, we had communicate and collaborate. Did G Judy has a comment? Judy said she liked to optimize. I optimize use, and again, it has it's the balance of you want to get the most out of the asset while at the same time, you know, that yeah, I mean, so improving, we go right? improving the relationship with our with our residents. So optimizing the use of the, uh, the airport for aviation. And I think communication then um, to Electra's comment uh, and also the concerns about noise, we should include residents, the city, as well as city okay. council. You know, communication is much broader than just talking to the city council. Heck, the mural project is... is and, yeah, to right I mean, well, and I would say, you know, to your, you know, there isn't a lot of, I mean, Mike does a good job doing press releases when these reports come out, but, but I don't think it's widely known some of the efforts that you've made climate, you know, mm -hmm. LED lighting. I mean, that it's hard to rise above the noise. It's hard to get that stuff out there, but I get all the press releases from the city. Mm -hmm. I think I follow you guys on Facebook, and I don't. I don't see you. I don't see bragging. Mm -hmm. right. right. And your communication could involve some bragging. Absolutely. And you might want to think about that from a strategy point of view. Have yeah. we bragged this month? Yeah, I mean, if I just took the top five things up on my list, you know, it's noise, it's perceptions playground of the rich, it's uh, you know, taxpayer. You know, am I getting any value out of the taxpayer funding? It's high carbon footprint and it's uh, redundant to see the rapids. So my strategy is how to like change those perceptions. Right. Exactly. So what I'm hearing though is in communication, continue the strong communication with city council, city administration, and seek opportunities to collaborate with city departments. You also want something in there, and I don't think you can necessarily say goal. continue. I think it's public relations. I think it's a new goal. Okay. So. I think a new goal is public relations. And again, I'm not trying to overweight the survey response, but no, I get it. I actually picked where I live because I, I ran sound maps from the interstate and you know all these things to find the quietest. I know somebody else who did that. <laughs> uh, so I get it. Um, yeah. And I understand. Yeah. Minetta had a point. I think you have to be careful about using the word optimize because. What you're suggesting is changing certain things that may not be possible to change. Like wow. runway two five is the is the preferred runway, mm -hmm. and it is the one where we have the best, uh, you know, the approaches and stuff mm -hmm. to land on. Um, and runway three zero is not even doesn't provide that. So realistically, I don't think you're going to change. The approaches in for runway 25 and the use of runway 25. No, I mean, I live under the flight path too, and I would have to say, I hear the planes, but I mean, they're not flying. It's so it's not know. approach that noise is the issue, it's it's uh run up and take off with some of these loud planes we've got. Yeah. I think optimize is still okay. I mean, it we're not, it doesn't, we're not saying optimize the. You're saying optimize the use for aviation. But pilots can realistically exactly. do yeah. to maintain a safe environment. Right, right. And, and we, we could potentially, you know, be addressing that with no tabs and that sort of thing as well. You know, if you, I don't think anyone here would, would contemplate changing approaches. We, we try to, we, we do a no, lot. When of, you say optimize, you're giving the impression. I'm talking about broad use, broad optimization, community uses, having kids come here and no, paint no, the I, mural and, and having pancakes. At least when I hear optimized, I'm hearing it within the existing assets, not by changing any of the assets yeah. or infrastructure. I think also this the meaning will can be made clear in strategies. 
<laughs> I think the same people who complain about the noise and this sort of thing are the same people that complained five and ten years ago. Probably. And they're also the individuals who aren't reading the press releases. But um, increase the use of the air pump and just piss them off even more. So I, I think optimize. We're, we're, it's it, optimize. I, I, did, I wasn't intending for that to imply that we should change you know, necessarily how people fly approaches or whatever, just anything we can do to optimize the way the airport is used. So I'll take a different tact and that's, is that even achievable? Because I, I think if we're going to have goals, okay, improve. we have to actually achieve them. <laughs> right. Improve. Well, so to, to, to our yeah. credit, yeah, we didn't know at the last meeting that we actually have noise abatement procedures. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, we that 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 is like the limit of our authority is like having that, and even that's not good enough. Well, it's because it's it's not enforced, it's not enforced, and, and but, it's not publicized. I mean, well, but how like, many people read that section? Well, of when the notum system went down last week, do you think many GA pilots shed a tear? I mean, we're not reading things like noise abatement procedures because clearly we don't, and. And well, so I'm wondering, is 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 that achievable? Like if you if you it put is achievable, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, we publicize noise abatement here in the airport on the bulletin boards and stuff. I, I haven't mean, seen. So I yeah, I haven't I seen it. Do that. I've never I've seen. seen it. Yeah, well, maybe in the past. I mean, the only reason I, I well, I, I didn't even know there was noise abatement. I know that my instructor, when I was getting checked out in the 182 just advised, hey, throttle back, well, you know, just let's let's be let's be good neighbors. But it wasn't that there was a no tan, it was just, you know, he kind of knew that was a good thing to do. And that's what I think. Right, right. Yeah. So in the good neighbor that you brought up, you're talking about the use aspect of things, right? Yeah. yeah. And you came up the, with the verb optimize because that's part of the conversation. Okay. Um, How about increased use in a manner that balances? And I don't know how to put this right. I mean, there's a balance we're trying to achieve is what it comes down to. Um, the economic, you know, the, the increased economic impact and community benefit against, you know, some of the downsides that could come with it. And if there's a better way to word that, um, but you, you kind of get what I'm getting at. The use is about balance. And that's why the word optimize came up. I think increased use needs to be in there. Lest we forget that most well, of our exactly. operational budget comes well, from Well, and that's why it was increased use because of financial sustainability. Yep. Um, but I think that you could tack on in a way that is, you know, balances. Well, also finding needs. ways to be a better neighbor to, to the residents who are impacted by that use. So may I play devil's advocate? For the people who complain about noise, are you ever going to be able to do enough? Oh, no, didn't say that. I mean, that, that but when you put it in your plan, but if I don't, you do set up expectations. Yeah, but, but if, I, if I don't right. put any boundary on it, right. uh, you know, next thing you know, we'll have, you know, afterburners on takeoff. It sounds kind of fun. I know it'd be fun. <laughs> So that third bullet, increased use of the airport for aviation and other community uses. If I'm somebody who's not a fan, a fan of the airport, what I'm focusing on is increased use of the airport. Mm -hmm. But what you could do is put that increased use of the airport for not only aviation, but also community use. Or community benefit. And then you then you emphasize, you, you kind of take away a little bit on the aviation side of it in terms of how people read that statement. You could also pull out the community uses and make another goal about, uh, I mean, it was an interesting marriage of uses in that statement. You could pull out um, something and, and focus strictly on community engagement and um, use of the airport. Well, maybe that, that public relations goal I mentioned, maybe right. that's where we, we, we kind of covered this and in, in I'll call it the, you know, the good neighbor goal. Right. And that part of being a good neighbor is not only acting, but also letting people know that we're right. doing things they might not be aware of. Right. And so, you know, maybe that, um, again, it's a good way to 
do it, but I always call it good neighbor goal. Uh, how do we be good, good neighbors? And I think part of that is the PR, the things we're already doing and, and people are not aware of. And the other is maybe some additional diligence uh, to help solve <laughs> uh, you know, some of the harshness that uh, may have crept up over the last five years. Some new community activities that could occur here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was quite inspired by the idea of having children yeah. do some work during the project and that, that was fantastic. And just as an aside, that the Iowa City Community School District has a point person for arts activities through their Any Given Child program. So it would be a one kind of contact yeah. connection if you wanted to involve schools. I think that'd be fantastic. I think there's a way we can fence off the temporary fencing to kind of keep it safe and snow fencing or something. You really have to close those hangers for a period anyway. So that would give you five goals. One of them is this to be named or to be classified. I mean, it's it's the bucket of good neighbor, public relations, um, community uses at the airport, um, engagement, that sort of thing. So we're kind of taking increased use and kind of carving that off. And saying, Listen, we're gonna we want to increase use because that's really about. Um, the financial viability right. of the year. You don't want us taking money from the general fund. This right. is how we make our money. Um, right. I, you know, I was, the term I, I would hear from uh, people would be to further activate the asset, right? How do we, right. you know, how do we further activate this asset? And then kind of carve out the community uses piece. And then let's talk mm -hmm. about this good neighbor. For the first goal, it seems to me that the seek opportunities to collaborate with other departments is something that Michael's been doing and we've sort of accomplished that. I mean, couldn't, couldn't we say continue strong communication and collaboration mm -hmm. with the city administration so. yeah. and other city departments? You mm -hmm. can simplify that one a yeah. lot. I think yeah. just yeah. continue strong communication with the council and 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 collaborate yeah. and continue and continue can collaborate. It's, yeah. it's a dated statement i mean Minetta, correct right. me if i'm wrong but we included that because we weren't really doing that and we were looking at opportunities to collaborate with like parks and rec and mm -hmm. streets streets and so all continue that. strong communication and collaboration yeah. with the city council city administration and city departments i mean it could just be I mean, succinctly stated. Yeah, it's, well, it was a collaboration. Right. It was murals yeah. collaboration. Yeah. And, uh, uh, communication the, and collaboration. The, the yeah. park, what are the, the, the movies? The movie. movie nights, but like a, with parks and recs. Yeah. I mean, you've been doing it. Yeah. I, I think if you sever, in, if you sever increased use of their airport for aviation to make it a standalone, you're spotlighting that. Mm -hmm. And I think that triggers, you know, it's going to. You want to leave it like you know, it is, maybe? Well, as I said my my suggestion is to not create a lightning rod. Yeah, well, <laughs> don't say it. Well, lightning rod keeps you safe. Sure. But also, community uses. So I think it emphasizes community uses a little more. Okay, so you could even mention that first: increase use of the airport for community activities as well as aviation, something like that. Or. You could put develop and um, increase funding mechanisms for airport operations and facility improvement and maintenance, knowing that your funding, your business model is increasing, increasing use. use of aviation and then just not mention it in the next goal. That could be a better way to go. We've already got the funding mechanisms in there, and that's not only use, it's you know, it's the foundation. It's yeah, and realistically, what are we going to do to increase aviation use? We we've done that already. We've improved runway two. Right. Yeah. Right now, we're kind of in a build that they will come mode because we you know, we've done everything to. Uh, yeah, and they are coming. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's I a mean, huge. I was actually here the other day. I was actually going to propose just dropping increased use of the airport for I'm in, a decrease. I was going to say get rid of the for aviation and increase use of the airport yep. for community yep. purposes because aviation is a community purpose. Like, I yeah, mean, it is, it is an umbrella term and the, the funding mechanism so, we talk about. Yeah, because the is funding it, is really separate. Is it, develop and, is it develop and increase funding mechanisms? Is it increase and maintain? Oh, I mean- it's, it's continue to develop and maintain funding because we okay. started to do something. Continue. To uh, develop and and do you want to increase? If you want to do more, you're going to have to make more money, or 
cut up cut costs, which we're starting to do with like sure. solar and, and we're trying to do and right. trying to do a little bit of both, but right now yeah. it's a little easier to do one. Yeah. The way we improve our facilities is not by selling fuel, it's by getting grants. True. <clears throat> so I'm on the second bullet point. Is there any increase in there or is it continue to develop and maintain? Which is kind of wordy, but um optimize. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you we'll find a place for that word. I think it's continued to. I think it's continue to develop and maintain continue to develop funding mechanisms, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. To develop continue to develop funding mechanisms. I would, I would say for airport operations, comma, improvements, comma, and maintenance. Okay. I would take that. Your recording was right. Yes. You're going to send it to me, right? Uh, <laughs> Judy has a question. Yes, Judy. Doesn't develop include increased? Well, I think so. That's why I didn't add increase. Continue to develop funding. Yeah. You don't need to maintain. Right. We don't need it anymore. I mean, and then you're dropping the word facility as well? For airport operations, comma, improvements, this improvements and maintenance. I don't think you need to say facilities improve, just say improvements, comma. Airport and operations, comma, and facilities? What? No, just improvements. Improvements, comma, okay. and maintenance. Okay, got it. Because improvement could be beyond, I mean, it's yes. yeah, all kinds of stuff. That, the FA or the federal government will fund. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we run up increase, against. <laughs> increase the use of the airport for or, or increase community uses of the airport. I think that's the general direction or increase the use of the airport for a greater public benefit or greater community benefit or something like that. I like community. I like putting community first. Yeah. yeah. So increase, increase community uses of the airport. That's really straightforward. And yeah, and I think the mural is, it, it will be a nice showpiece for that. You're going to get your restaurant yet, aren't you? We're going to optimize it too. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I was going to put the, uh, this restaurant Judy. potential in the next one. Uh, Judy has some thoughts on that when she can talk. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about strategies. It's a good thing she's got Main laryngitis. The safety and the aesthetic appeal of the airport um, infrastructure. Um, so what do you, how do you want to talk about infrastructure? Well, I mean, first of all, a lot of the pair side stuff is, I mean, mostly mission accomplished and we got a few little things we could do, but for the most part we executed that plan. We're now kind of talking about land side. So is it, <laughs> you know, is it maintain safety and aesthetic appeal of the airport infrastructure? Or are we now moving to a phase where we're really interested in taking that next generation or making that next generation investment? Well, we do have a lot of pair side infrastructure projects that are going to come up and probably going to continue through this five year. Mm -hmm. You have you have a lot of air side infrastructure projects that we still have on the, kind of on the plan. Yeah, um, I would say like in the last ten years, you've kind of if if you look at kind of how things have been at the airport, you've got a period of where. We do things for growth, and then we do things to optimize what we've just done for growth yeah, so right. that we can house things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's where we're transitioning to yeah, right now. We're transitioning from that growth phase. Like we've done things to encourage the bigger airplanes and, and stuff like that. Now we need to do things to house all of that stuff that we're getting. Mm -hmm. Like the, the apron, hangar. apron expansion. Apron yeah. expansion, more hangers, you know, yeah. So uh, Jane's got a question. Infrastructure can include landscape, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure, I consider pretty much everything. 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 Yeah. yeah, but maintain though is the wrong verb because we really want to build, right? So, um, what you're really saying is that we want to develop our infrastructure to fully activate the um, capital improvements 
completed over the last five years. Yeah. That, that there's these improvements that we've made, very capital intensive. Now there is infrastructure development wanted to fully capitalize on that or fully activate that. Could you say that again? Please to develop uh, infrastructure. Develop infrastructure mm -hmm. to fully activate. Okay. Capital improvement or capital investments completed. Completed capital investments over the past five to ten years, something like that. Ten years. Recently yeah. completed yeah. capital yeah. investments. Yeah. My vote would be take it from C-suite to middle management levels of vocabulary, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah something <laughs> like that. I'm You'll not, see I'm it in what we get. Hey, if I want a C-suite, I would have wanted to be there too. That could be some synergies. Structure. Yeah, we don't have any acronyms. I think that's too vague, honestly. I mean, it's very lawyerly, but are, are we looking to uh, to uh, build uh, some of the vertical infrastructure? Is what, what the FAA yeah. calls a vertical infrastructure mm -hmm. buildings. You know, mm -hmm. we want to uh, fix our our terminal building and maybe expand it and maybe expand so is there a more direct approach that says just that we want to develop De de develop in develop the vertical infrastructure of the airport i mean that's probably that would be sufficient uh something i, I would propose that we start talking in let, let's not wordsmith it and let's just mm -hmm. Uh, what what it is yeah. that we're trying to do? Yep. In in a nutshell, we have growing pains. We we yeah. have we have a longer runway. We have a longer runway. We're okay. about to have more apron space. We we've got you know tons of investment that's been going on. Yeah. But that has sort of outpaced some of the other stuff, the the core stuff that we yeah. have, and we yeah. need to we we need to make them match. We have right? a huge waiting list for hangers. Yeah. For this stuff. So I guess how do we how do we wordsmith? Develop the infrastructure to support the range of airport uses, the growing, expand, the growing, growing, yeah. uses, the growing the uses of the airport, the growing airport uses, which and can, community needs and community needs. <laughs> and optimize <laughs> and, opt yes. and optimize the estro and. <laughs> Sorry, Judy. Judy's doing this. I can see that. Develop the infrastructure <laughs> to support the growing <coughs> airport use. Wait. Okay. Basically, further develop the <coughs> further develop airport infrastructure to match the growing uses yeah. of the airport. Yeah. But so oh, that's, that's pretty good. It's growing uses. So you're an IT guy. You speak English pretty well. I have to because I have to translate. You have to for, speak to yeah. humans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I talk to the engineers. I talk to the people, so the engineers don't have to. And we have a fifth goal, which is the public relations, right? Yes. I'm just giving you a hard time. I haven't even said I'm not going to be a That's true. <laughs> <laughs> are you tracking hmm? um, how, how are you doing it however long we need no I, you never say that <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> well, um, what i would say Judy were here, Judy what, would, what i would say know. though is as you're going through this to you know to the point let's try to keep this language simple yep. and direct yeah. um you know i, I want to say simple block language that's you know vague enough that we can do what we want with it but also direct enough that we're not if people are saying well, what do you mean by that right yeah. right i think of goals as things you're going <clears throat> towards so they are broad enough that what you're doing anything you're doing within the organization should fit in a goal category mm -hmm. but it's not prescriptive yeah um, we'll talk about some strategies and some possible actions. The last plan had those in there, and that explains to people what you're talking. But those lists, because you're an opportunistic organization, this will not be. It it won't be a complete list. 
-hmm. So this will have five goals, what I understand, communication goals that will be um, similar to the the goal that you previously had, Um, funding goal, a use goal that talks about community use and infrastructure, and then an additional goal that also links to community use, which is more engagement. And we can look at that and see if, for example, the community uses goal and the engagement goal can be combined because there might be potential for that. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you, uh, Judy. Yes. In the success of a goal. Right. And once we get these goals, we'll we'll talk about success indicators as well as some strategies. So, I mean, the next conversation is really how will you know that you've done this? Mm-hmm. And that sometimes links to, you know, the conversation <laughs> about strategies. And then, um, you know, kind of the expectations for what, how you'll measure success in your activities. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you feel okay about where we got to tonight? Any last comments, yeah. Manetta? Do you have any comments? I think we made some good progress. Okay. So at the next meeting, I'll, I'll basically have some things for you to respond to, and then we'll talk about the details and the success indicators. And once again, and then I'll also have the revised um, statements so you can visit those and see. And once again, I'll send that out. I'll send that to Mike in advance. I think it's always good to yeah. be able to read something and not have to respond to it at the meeting. Anything else you need? from me this evening, any other comments? No, I think this is going well, thank you. Okay, Okay, good. And then, you know, how to find me if you have second, you know, other thoughts, um, wording thoughts, (laughs) you're gonna send me the recording. (laughs) (laughs) Get that wording. I'll figure that out. And, um, And then next time, as I said, we'll go into more detail and I'll have something in advance of the meeting. Okay. Yeah, great. Appreciate All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you. All right. Thanks for doing. Thanks. Okay. We're ready to move to our next item in the agenda. Airport construction project, FAA grant project. Uh, most of these are going to be just basically the same updates you've heard for the last couple of months because it's winter. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> threshold relocation, um, I've uh, we're waiting for spring for some final painting and clean up. Uh, 1230 displaced threshold. Uh, Carl is, is finishing up our, our our scope of agreement. We've ran that by FAA, and I don't yeah. think we have major comments. So I yeah, think you'll just had one comment. So we're yeah, I think you'll see that on the agenda for approval next month. Just for, to clarify that that includes the LED lights. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's one of the things, and just one of the things that we're going back and forth about. You know, and um, is that when you do threshold uh, an odd number of, I mean, hundreds of feet, it really messes up the light space. <laughs> and so, the, so it's an I opportunity. Think our recommendation would be in originally being told Anthony that this would could increase the cost. The recommendation was looking at different light rails. It almost makes sense just. Long yep, so, perfect. Whatever it takes. Because there's just no good way to keep up spacing when you do the threshold 300 feet. And you know, they're almost 200 foot space. LED, 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 that whole runway, Carl. And we're looking at having happy three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tell you, those, those new LED lights are fantastic. In there. Know, do we have happy on yes. 3 0 now? No, no. 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 So no. that would be an That would be a yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And then that the LED passes. And we talked to Anthony, and he was like, yeah, they quite look at them. So we also need to include the LED pappies for seven. LED pappies. Oh, so seven has or not pappies, reels. I'm sorry. The reels. reels. I was gonna say you can set up like a six degree light path <laughs> on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Too many acronyms. LEDs less bright. Um I know when we originally had LEDs put in taxiway lights, it was like almost blinding. Hey. Yes, the yeah, so they were. Way they're still in, but what it is, it's the single wavelength yeah. light, and it's just a little harsher on the honest. But I thought that they had made a development in the lights to be able to either purchase lights or adjust the brightness of them. 
Well, the white step down. I mean, the, the, the white step down has gone dropped down. So the the the, the um, lumen, uh, luminosity, lumens effect thing is within the guidelines for the FAA. I don't, to be honest, I don't know if they changed that back then or not. Yeah. But for some reason, maybe I'm just getting used to them. They don't bother me. Yeah. I, I just remember kind of not too long after we had them in stuff, what, when we actually. Yep. Had them working, I'm like, whoa. They were harsh. Yeah, they were. But then harsh. it was shortly after that that I thought that they had changed the technology a little bit to make them more or less bright. more user friendly than they were when they first came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Terminal that brings us to the terminal area study and what we what I wanted to do and. Uh, Carl's got a scope of services work up, so basically details the plan. Uh, I mute. And Carolyn is on from again, so we're we point we were in the them on this. Carolyn, hopefully there we go. Okay, too many clicks. There we go. Okay. Um, what we wanted to do is basically walk through the scope of services with the commission so everybody's on the same page of what's going to happen, um, how it's going to happen, kind of how we have things laid out. And if you have any questions, comments, uh, different thoughts that, of how we've got it prepped and planned, uh, now's the time to do it as we're trying to sort this out. So, Carl, I, you Carolyn, want to take... Can you hear us all okay? Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. And please Great. just jump in. Uh, a lot of this is going to be centered around your work and so please jump in and um we change the view link yeah there you stop there we go ready to screen share that anyway um, <laughs> i mean basically i think you got ahead in the packet and this is a draft but um there's the two components there's the, the building itself and then there's the so-called gateway concept that is the kind of a trapezoid out to the road. Uh, we did modify, uh, we had originally said three different options, one with the light touch where you would do some, just some modification, basically retain the same structure and, and with the entrance, the same, um, same general concept, you, know, you wouldn't move the entrance drive, you, you wouldn't do anything major. Uh, and then uh, something more involved, which would include, say for example, and Carol, again, Please jump in with your ideas, but with that would, for example, maybe keep the center portion of this building and and replace on both ends or do something on both ends. And the third option would be to completely demolish and start from scratch and, and something new. Uh, we added a fourth one, which is do nothing. Okay. And that is basically because if you don't do that as an option, so somebody could come back and say, well, why do we have to do anything? I mean, as did you study that? What are the you know, pros and cons of doing nothing. <laughs> and um, that's good. So, so it's uh, something that we did talk about. Yeah. Uh, and then, and just going through this, I mean, we, we do talk about what your existing areas are. Um, we did talk about potentially if we did major things, adding in a, what we could do to add an event venue with a catering kitchen, at least not a, maybe a full restaurant kitchen mm -hmm. because of the requirements that kicks up. Um, and then, um, we would go through there and um, and if, go through the Carolina, maybe you could jump in and throw the process because again, the building we're talking about would be your your venue around work. So can you kind of go through the process of what you would do for those options? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think that, you know, after um, just defining what those four options are, there's kind of three uh, main components to this. The first is the pre-design component of the process um, where we'll uh, do the project kickoff and we actually um, develop the program in, for the building um, in more detail. The second part of the process is pre-concept design. So it's really during the pre-concept de design phase where we'll start to get ideas around what the different options can look like. And that will include um, floor plan options, an architectural description of what each will be, um, visualizations that show a little bit of the character of what it could look like and what the massing of the um, options would be. Um, 
uh, input on a conceptual site plan that uh, would support each of the options um, and a opinion of probable costs. Did I jump too far ahead in the proposal there? Is that fine? No, not at all. Sorry. Okay, great. Um, so it's really during that process that we'll start to like firm up what those four different options look like. Um, and then we'll meet and we'll review them and make modifications based on feedback um, from a stakeholder group identified um, by you. And then all of that will be synthesized in a final report. Um, part of that process will also be public outreach. Um, so we've outlined what a community visioning session would look like, and then a check-in to actually share those options um, with the community for their feedback. Um, we had talked about a survey, a user survey, so that you take the, you know, the corporations and the individuals and your tenants and anybody, I mean, universities is at the um, sit and just, and you would define how far out and who specifically you wanted to reach out to for that. Uh, and that would be in that uh, that pre-design after the kickoff, because in the kickoff, you would define kind of where you wanted to go with that, who you wanted to involve. Two things I would add to that. One, there may be future users after a development that we don't currently have. And so yeah, and there may be a whole new group of users that begin to use the airport once it has different capabilities, facilities, that sort of thing. Uh, and the other is um, if you asked, uh, you know, a farmer with horses what he wanted, he wouldn't tell you a tractor. He'd say bigger horses and he'd less feed, right? So um, that's the other thing with, with the survey, too, is you, you, you may, you know, get some feedback that isn't, uh, it's more kind of focused on what they currently see and, and, and what they want to see change, but not kind of beyond that, what, what you know, we could bring to them that they haven't even imagined. Okay. Good, good points. Approach, could you approach, for example, the Chamber of Commerce, you know, to try to pull in additional? The Chamber, or there's also, uh, I think, uh, an economic development organization in town. Uh, yeah, they, they call themselves the Iowa City Business Partnership now. It's the combination of the Iowa City Area Development Group and the Chamber. They yeah. kind of merged. Yeah, so we should um, definitely get their opinions. Yeah. Um, and then the other might be uh, like the uh, visitor and bureau, uh, sorry, visitor and convention center. The convention and visitor bureau. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah was, a, I see CVB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right because I mean, you don't know what you don't know. Right. You, right? Judy's got something. And the more people you involve, potentially that you know they may be the ones that come up with the idea of something that this area is lacking totally. Right. That none of us have even thought about. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Uh -huh. um, and Judy asked if it'll eliminate the wayfinding signage. I don't think it'll eliminate it per se, but we might have to change it up depending on how buildings are built or where things I, happen to be. And that was one of the things when we're looking at the site concept, um, keeping, I mean, you've just done some rebranding so-called with the, with your um, logos and things like that. And we're not attempting to say, Throw that out and start we're not we're not looking at that but it would be in potentially you know i mean i'm not saying that maybe where we put this actually down the road might not end up moving but hopefully we could move it and not you know not replace it and or um because what we're looking at is besides the building itself is when we're looking at the concept i mean there's a potential that just um maybe the maybe a new interest rate might be down the middle with mm -hmm with you know, aesthetic improvements or whatever development you would want on the sides because there's a, there's a big area out there that right now isn't being used. And how could that potentially be used in ways that to go along with your vision that you just completed, how can we use any of that area potentially for community involvement and bringing them out here and having positive feelings about the airport? Are there things there? And that would probably be in the, again, for that, for the, Inference concept, we again the do nothing, minor improvements, maybe major might be some things that leave the road where it is, and then the the you know the clean sheet part part of the door is is anything's possible, you know, and, and then it's a clean sheet. Um, so one of the things, and um, I know that um, again this is more in, in Carolyn's realm, but the 
one of the first things as after kickoff when we're looking at these, obviously we'll look at the structural capabilities of the building, what would be need to be done just to bring things up to code. Because once you start time tearing into things, you can't always just do the minimal without mm -hmm. um, going beyond and meeting code issues uh, for you know electrical and HVAC and access and and all of those type of things. Um, yeah, and sp specifically, you know, buildings that were built before 1970 often don't have the um, same structural capabilities that are required by today's codes. So if we were to, we couldn't propose putting like a four-story addition on something that doesn't meet the current structural code. So we'll keep that in mind um, and have that um, in advance of actually doing any of the, the concept design work. Um. I don't know how far in depth, I mean. Well, I, I think that kind of covers it. Uh, I, I wanted to make sure the commission understood just the area we're looking at. We're not looking at building D um, because that's so, that's just too far out of the scope of terminal that the FAA doesn't really pay for. And it's hard to hide in there that we're looking at this and spending money on it. Um, so it, it's basically the terminal area footprint, the uh, viewing area, um, and then, yeah, like like Carl said, and kind of like we mapped out that trapezoid that just extends out to Riverside Drive that covers the circle and all of the ground kind of in front of us. If you were to look out the window, um, again, we we have we have public participation planned for it. I think that's a key. Um, another thing to keep aware of is is we're going to have eyes on this. Um, we're going to have people on the outside that are may not necessarily be involved, but they are watching um, because I did get co uh, comments from uh, council meeting uh, on, on how we were looking at the historic nature mm -hmm. of, you know, the fact that this building is 1951 vintage. And mm -hmm. even though it's not on any, any registers, it's it's eligible um, and what we were doing to Preserve, you know, or, so preserve honor. or honor or well, we've respect. Already, even though we're really not even started after comments about the yeah. center section of the so right. yeah the historical right. context of that. so um, that we need to make sure that we just just make sure we, we kind of know you at least keep the context of it or the yeah um, involved and the more things we can anticipate the easier right. it is to cover during and, the and process and another thing that we will have to keep in mind is when we're looking at cost is when you start getting federal funding there are portions that are fa eligible for funding and there are portions that are not so development would be, you know, things like um, offices are not, um, um, or areas to queue passengers, anything that has to passengers, restrooms, all of that type of thing, entrance, um, those type of things are. So we will have to make sure that, you know, we have, we include what potential financing would be for what portions of a project, um, because you don't want to go grandiose all this. And then they say, this is great, but that event venue and kitchen that you added on was is one of the more expensive parts of the project, and that's not at all the FAO. That's all at your cost. And to be honest, that's kind of the direction I assume the FAA would go on that. Well, but, we are targeting the bill money, which is right. a little bit more flexible. Yeah. So yeah, it's a little better. But even then, they, there there will be the FAA involvement if yeah. we're targeting funding. And, and is there a problem with having a mix of private donors? Like if we had a corporate sponsor for certain parts of the building? You know, for parts of the building that are not federally fundable or for match. I've actually done that before. I did it, it's a small, smaller terminal up at Monticello mm -hmm. where they had somebody that donated money towards the uh, project. And that's why they did it in the first place because he said it was specifically for a terminal. Mm -hmm. And then they had a guy that had his airplane base that had owned a quarry that said, I'll donate the stone if you'll put stone on it. And then they, one night they were still looking for extra money. They went to city council. There's some other issue wasn't even around that. And they said, you know what? We're going to put everybody's name that donates. We need this much money. And before they left the city council, they had all the money they needed in one night mm -hmm. because the terminal is more visible. More people see it when you drive in. So mm -hmm. there, you can use private money on a, for again, for non-eligible items or for proper or for a match. local match. Mm -hmm. and that, I mean, you know, the Pella Porsche. Airport, I don't know if people are going in there. Yeah. They certainly have the Pella Corporation all over the place mm -hmm. inside that thing. Mm -hmm. And Cedar Rapids Airport has lots of corporate columns. columns. Yeah. yeah. 
So you know, that's largely how those buildings were, and that's largely how Ankeny was funded too, because they had uh, Iowa State and hy V and yeah. So okay, or Ames. No, Ames. Ankeny. Yeah, yeah. You've got Ames, both. Both. <laughs> Ames went Ames. the other way. The building itself did not have federal funding because. They had enough donors and they said, you know what, the hassles the FAA was putting on them about what they could and couldn't do. And they just said, forget this. And so they used the FAA money for the, the site work and the end parking lot and utilities and all that and then build it with good work for us too. I mean, say. and it's a possibility. Yeah. And yeah. Where did, where did Ames's uh, donate money come from? Do you know? We don't know, but I could find out. Yeah. I mean, there may be a playbook there, similar kind of community, um, same kind of stakeholders. That might be a good playbook for us to find. Arguably, I better community. Possibly. My yeah. very humble opinion. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. I, I was a project manager on that. I just did more of the funding came to yeah, yeah. find out. So that'd be, that'd be helpful. Yeah. Um, you got a good layout in terms of your phases. Uh, I'm sure you didn't include dates for obvious reasons, but roughly kind of what timeline? Well, I think we said, Carolyn, um, uh, so I think a seven month timeline for the duration of tasks one and two, and then the grant application and close out would take a few more months after that. Okay. So seven months would get us to a uh, proposal basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, and we will, we, if we need to tighten anything up to meet deadlines for grant submittals, we can look at that. But right. that's kind of the basic where we're starting from today. Yeah. Yeah. The general idea is to have us in line and ready to go for. Was September, October for whenever that next bill uh, grant deadline is. Mm -hmm. We had December to June, but we're already into, so, you know, we're still in February. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so we're already up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, again, that was uh, kind of a, just making sure the commission and everybody's on the same page, what we're, what we're getting, what they're setting the expectations. Cause I know we've talked a lot of different areas mm -hmm. and, um, and we're funding this with the bill money. Uh, yes, this is coming out of the, some of those bill funds. Now we do have a some specific amounts of uh, renderings. I know that you have the renderings are can be expensive to mm -hmm. produce, mm -hmm. and you know so we wanted to, to limit that. But as we get to more refined, if we need that, we have the means to add those. If we need more down the road. Fair enough. Um, yeah. So if sounds great. There's really nothing that's jumping out at us that we think we're missing at the moment. We'll probably look for a, a, an agreement and a resolution at the next meeting. And no more like staying on this yet. Not yet. <laughs> there, there's a couple more steps. Uh, one, uh, we wanted to make sure we had the scope right before yeah. uh, uh, Carl and the team put the price tag to it, and then two, there's going to uh, presumably, by based on what we're looking at, there's going to be a. Uh, a third party evaluation of the whole thing because of, of the price tag. Okay. So the FA requires yeah. that for anything. Yep. Mm -hmm. So a couple more things to jump through as, as we uh, finish this off, but yeah, I'd say look for uh, something hopefully next week. Next week. Thank you. Okay, well, Carolyn, I, you, we can talk and just, there were just pretty, Judy has some hi, Judy. changes there. Hi, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can city still... Uh, yes, the so um, I, I was going to get that to that in my kind of budget management update, but uh, we've got all the approvals and stuff taken care of with Midam. They are going to put a street light over and on the south side of that intersection on our corner. Awesome. Uh, oh, good. Kind of very dark. Think of where that is. that uh, fire hydrant is somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so they are working on another street light. Um, I just don't, I don't, I haven't gotten, I haven't seen a, a date from when mid -Am is doing that. Um, but the uh, transit people that work directly with them for these things uh, thought uh, six to six weeks or so. So probably February-ish. Great. That's really cool. And again, you all know how to get in touch with me, Mike, obviously, and I are mm -hmm. He's on my speed dial. So mm -hmm. um, if you have any questions or concerns or anything, don't hesitate to let me know. So. Judy has something else to say. Judy, yeah. And we'll adapt the lighting. If we if we move things, we'll have to plan for, for all of that. So if the road moves, if the entrance right. location moves, we'll have to plan Part for of that. that would be lighting to yeah. make it not only safe and for an 
for you know anybody that might out be on trail or whatever walk it'd be safety and aesthetics aesthetics yeah yeah we don't want to kind of draw you in I mean yeah. anything else anything else okay Thank you. thanks you very much no nope. it's, so it's great it's nice thanks meeting you. everyone nice meeting you so we are moving to solar park uh, CMT is putting together their scope of services agreement. Um, where, right now, the way it's going to look is it's going to be two phases. So it's going to be that kind of environmental stuff that we can tackle right now. Um, and then phase two will be that design and build for the system. Uh, we're trying to wrap that up in a single agreement just so it's a little bit cleaner. Um, but it's in, it's in the works. <laughs> a little behind to where uh, Bolton and Mink's uh, task orders are, but uh, it's coming. Um, DOT grant project. Yeah, FY22 program, South T Hanger infrastructure. We're just waiting for weather and whatever winter is doing to us. Um, it's not being that bad. It's, still it's not. It, that, well, that's the problem. It's yeah, not being that bad. I'm not even sure. Almost dig. I mean, it's, yeah. It's pretty um, amazing. But the problem is when we do build, dig a big hole, especially if we try to do it right now, we're going to get negative 20 degree yeah. weather. Yeah. Um, and mud. And, and mud. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, you know, that March, April time frame, whenever spring hits and, and we were confirmed or more or less confirmed that we're in good weather. And uh, part of the part of the concern from the contractor side is they have 25 days to do everything. Um, so they obviously don't want to start the project until they're pretty assured that they can start and get through it without. We're starting to get some submittals from them to yeah. push that in the next few weeks. So as soon as the weather allows if we want to have to be waiting for approval of their materials or concrete mix and signs that come off them. Um, terminal building improvements and wayfinding signage. I know we had that scope taken care of. I think we're just putting things together for a, a, sit down and get a yeah. yeah, a bid package and, and something that we can send out to some folks because it, it doesn't meet the thresholds for like formal bid process, mm -hmm. but we still have to put some stuff together to let people know what they're doing. Uh, parking lot additions again, just finishing work, making sure the uh, grass takes you know in the spring and stuff like that. But otherwise, it's well being used. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge improvement. Uh, I, I threw it on there. I don't have anything listed, but if, if for some reason we had something come up um, or we had thoughts on doing something else, um, one thing I am looking at, and I, I've talked to Carl. Um, during our budget process, um, I found out that the city is using conductive pavement in some areas, which is the, the pavement that you can energize and it heats up and melts, uh, clear snow off of itself. Really? Um, it, <laughs> Go on. <laughs> exactly. And if your dog takes a pee, uh, well, um, <laughs> doesn't breathe. <laughs> there, so right now they're doing it. It's still technically a research project, but they're doing it around a bus stop area. So there's going to be sidewalk in, in a bus stop that's kind of that has this stuff. And what it is, is basically you have your concrete, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's like a two or three inch layer that, that that's where the conductive material is. That That's what heats up. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's electrical powered. It mm -hmm. has monitors and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it was something that's that was a design project back in like 2019, 2020, um, an Iowa State researcher was working on it. They did a patch at Des Moines Airport mm -hmm. where they they actually did apron in this stuff. And all through the winter, that was like the one clear spot on the airport mm -hmm. um, all winter. Um, yeah. We know the, the Iowa State person and Brian Bell at Des Moines Airport. I'm going to go talk to him. Yeah, so um, I'm looking at trying to figure out how to incorporate that into either our next phase of taxi lane project or um, Matt and I have been talking about hangar expansion and what we can do. And um, if we were able to do something with this, this might Even help. Even if you could get like three or four feet in front of your hangar, uh -huh. that way you don't have the, you know, if you leave that little pile of snow there, yeah. that yeah. would be some help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that, um, that ends up creating like ice dams and you can't get yep. your airplane out. If you don't scrape it right away, it's it can be a problem. Yep. Um, Amen. So that, yeah, that would be a great use. Um, but trying to, right now I'm working with Carl, trying to figure out ways to incorporate it. Um, part of the issue that the city's going through right now is because they are, as far as I know, the first in the state to try to use it on a, like a publicly accessible project that they're going through the permit 
headaches of being the first and you have an entire process that was never set up to incorporate this thing mm -hmm. um, I bet it uses a ton of electricity so well not really that's back in the 90s section do you remember that line i don't it's remember taxiway, but that was asphalt uh -huh. they used the conductive asphalt and then put a cap over non-conductive so that you know you didn't shock yourself if you fell down on your hands <laughs> but and the problem at that point then they used uh carbon in the mix yeah and it did they said when they heated up it worked great but they said you know the lights dimmed in that part of chicago and turned it on mm. it so heavily dependent on power mm. this one from what i mean i just started researching it like about two days ago when my has yeah. so it appears Jeez. to have much less concerned with the power usage than it did years ago. I, I mean, know. it's electrical resistance, heat, so it's... Yeah. Judy yeah. says she's got YouTube videos of somebody using it yeah. for their driveway. Yeah. And Well, the concept's been around for a long time. Yeah, it has. Heated water or things like that, but yeah. this being solid state is the key. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, we're going to be going to solar, so... Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the thought process. If this is something we can run off of solar power yeah. anyway, um, then great, it's going to save snow plows, it's going to save mm -hmm. time and that effort. Ice, the ice melt material that we buy, mm -hmm. that's very expensive. Another, another, uh, what do you call it, community engagement opportunity to show how we are <laughs> reducing our carbon footprint, yeah, or <laughs> run off into the river, or yeah, well, and... yeah, so it. that's that's uh, I'll tab that as future projects. Um, it's interesting, I like yeah. That. yeah. I'm actually, I need to replace my driveway. Maybe I'd be looking at it. Oh my God. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, airport operations budget went through the city uh, council budget meetings. Everything was fine. Um, city council had nice things to say about the airport and how everything's going. And uh, uh, I had one city council ask about the the environmental stuff. You know, what are we doing for climate climate change things? And and we talked about the solar power project. Uh, uh, we did talk a little bit about the, you know, what happens with the uh, fuel. Because right now, as far as I know, and I think this is accurate now and still, aviation is the last bastion of leaded fuel. It is, yes. Um, and, you know, there's not a lot we can do until the FAA really certifies a, a replacement. But I think, you know, once that happens, either the market or or regulatory legislators, because they now have something viable, they can say, we're cutting off. You no longer can use uh, low lead fuel. Well, and, and I actually saw some news about it very yeah. recently. It's like a $500 STC for a for like an IO 360 or something. Like mm -hmm. they, they've started, they've started certify, certifying it on a power plant by power plant basis mm -hmm. is how I'm reading it. And so this at is the gammy, the gammy fuel. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I thought that was approved for all engines. No, I think it still has to be. I think it's, it's still, I think it's still an STC, oh but it, yeah. it's it should be a drop in replacement. So what you're really doing is paying five hundred dollars for placards, which is mildly infuriating. <laughs> but but they they invested the time and research That's into the fuel, really so like they've got to recoup it. I, I can't believe the FAA would do that. That's, <laughs> they're hamstrung by you know. I, 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 mean, I get it and I don't. I mean, Gammy can make their money just by selling the fuel. I don't see why they have to sell STCs to every airplane. It's not every airplane. It's by power plant. And the other thing yeah. is that we're going to hit a critical mass where... Yeah, but it is every airplane if if, if you have to have STC. Matt, I don't know if you're listening, but I'm going to unmute yeah, you just yeah, in yeah. case you have something to say. Um, yeah. Um, but if they're, we're going to hit a critical mass where like enough will have it but some won't, and we're going to have to pick that line mm -hmm. where that tank is no longer is, 100 low yeah, it's, and it's 100 unleaded. Yeah. yeah. But we only have one 100 low lead tank, correct. Correct, right? We, we don't have the option for well, two different tanks. Yeah. If we did, we'd probably. When they yeah. transition, can you, if you have, if you're a cap, can you use both or do you, is it actually? It's not a one way thing. It's yeah. just you can also use this fuel. Yeah, 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 there's no physical change to the aircraft. It's it just is probably just a five hundred dollar placard. Yeah. yeah so, so I mean that that was always true with, with Mo gas too for right. certain yeah. engines. Yeah. But but I mean if you if this is the the fuel that they want everyone to use and it's okay for all engines, why do you have to have a? Well, I'm sure SDC? brand new airplanes would be automatically part of that, right? I mean they would. Yeah. It's just going back to the old airplanes and I guess recouping the cost on the I think it's, I think it, it 
maybe Matt knows, but I'm pretty sure fuel is specified in the type certificate. So like, yeah, that's why that's it has to go through that process. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a pretty significant process, I think, because there's just so many variations and so many different manufacturers involved and so many different warranties involved. And in the end, just like we're, you're seeing 99.9% .9 of the airports have 100 low lead capabilities and they have jet fuel capabilities and that's it. And so everybody will be forced with a transition someday, but hopefully they'll have some enough time to be able to use it a little bit more and work out any potential issues before they mandate a change. Well, and, But the, in, the industry has said that they want the change, just a matter of getting it done. You wonder too that, you know, when everyone does, anyone does a repower though, I mean, yeah, would you automatically. They add a turbocharger or something. You know, well, like, I mean, just an engine rebuild. And yeah. If I'm going to, you know, repower my aircraft because I'm, I'm going to okay. pass TBO and I'm, it's time yeah. to do it, I'm going to get that SDK. I'm going to spend that $500 right. on yeah. top of the already. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it'll get done. It'll, it'll just happen as these engines. Uh, you don't have to pay tax on it in my home. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> But no, it, it'll get done. It'll just be a matter of uh, as engines are overhauled, it'll take probably 10 to 15 years to sort it all out. But. Yep. Well, I think if, if airports start having only the unleaded fuel, then people are going to be highly motivated yeah. to buy the STC. Yeah. And if it's just a matter of buying an STC, that's okay. I, I have suspicion it's going to be more complicated than that. It, it is no new parts. Yeah. It's meant to be a drop. But I know, like some airplanes, like I know, for example, like, like my Comanche has a uh, 0360 uh, Lycoming, and some some airplanes that have that engine can burn motor gas. Mm -hmm. However, the Comanche can't because the, the way the uh, you carburetor, carburetor is 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 seated, yeah, you you get uh, I guess too much uh, vaporization of the fuel, yeah. and uh, you get knocking and stuff like that. So so it may be aircraft specific and not necessarily engine specific. Which gets even yeah, more complicated. It could be. Um, I just know that the design requirements were this needs to be a drop in, otherwise it won't be successful. Yes. It's definitely problematic in California if you just drop it in. Yes. Oh yeah. So that is definitely not yeah. Yeah. not an optimal Yes. Okay. Airport operation <laughs> management. <laughs> um yeah, outside of that, just uh, finishing up the budget's capital um improvement for, uh program was run through West Council, uh, nor I don't think I had any real questions on that. But that's where that comment on on the terminal building, what are we doing to, you know, observe it? Uh, yeah, observe the legacy of, yep. of this building um, in the process. So uh, just keep that in my management. Uh, draft annual report is in the packet. Take a read through that. Um, throw me comments. Um, I think that the, probably the next meeting will kind of adopt it here and then uh, send it up to city council and have a couple of commission members go up to city council in the near future and just give a five minute, hey, you know, thanks. And uh, here's what we've been doing and here's what we plan to do uh, for over the next year. Um, events, um, autocross events are on there, pancake events are on there. Uh, drive in movies looks like we're going to have one movie this year. Um, that took a little bit of finagling because they are cutting back on their uh, showings, and I promised we would pay for the porta potty to keep the event out here, which I thought was a um, pretty easy way to keep them out here if that worked. And <laughs> um, so that's uh, that's in place. I have reached out to the uh, EA chapter for the Young Eagles. Uh, I haven't heard anything back from Justin or Connie yet. I don't know if Connie's back from Arizona. No, wait, but, really kind yeah. of Connie won't get back from, they're usually down in Gulf Shores. They don't get back until March or yeah. reliably but in April, I think. I did shoot emails out to thing last year because it was largely because we expected the runway to be messy in the middle of the summer. I just wanted to make sure we get back on the calendar. I have a question. <laughs> so even paying for the body, they wouldn't do more than one? I think at this point, it's just it's one movie because they're balancing other cuts and areas. So um, yeah, I, I didn't argue and, too much about it. Didn't argue yeah. too much about the numbers, just as long as we get keep the chain going, keep the event going, that's uh, 
And, and Mike did a really good job because essentially this is an email saying, oh, yeah, we're not going to use the airport this year. And they had basically already decided that. But then Mike kind of volunteered to try to try to help by doing that. That was a really good idea. And I'm really glad that we're keeping our foot in the door with him. So that was good work on his part. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that takes us up to the FBO flight, uh, and Matt. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to be brief. I was on mute the whole time because I'm, I'm at home with sick kids and they were screaming in the background and stuff. But so I'll <laughs> hit on the airport staff and I'll hit on them um, just a couple other quick comments, but I'll try to be as brief as I can. The airport uh, um, maintenance type of stuff, um, this has definitely been a winter for the brush because it's been one of those things where we get a little bit of snow and we can brush it off while it's still slush before it freezes at night. Um, so that's been extremely valuable. We're looking into figuring out. Uh, Andrew and Mike have been talking a little bit about trying to get a brush also for like our big tracker. Because um, right now, the way it's structured with you take off the brush to put on the plow. Um, and, you know, a lot of times you don't know if the brush is going to work and it's kind of a process. And ideally you'd be, have a plow and a brush at the same time and all these other things so um but that'd be potentially a good direction to go um <clears throat> i just got back from the cirrus conference uh iowa city is is a jet air cirrus service center um so i was out there in las vegas kind of hearing what they have in mind in terms of uh products and i mean their biggest problem just like everybody's supply chain and so there's a lot of discussions around that was, was the primary discussion there but <clears throat> but um, they're happy with happy with all the service centers. If anything, they want to grow them and not not get rid of them. So we're in a good position to continue to move forward with that. Um, the uh, the other comments I have are just on other topics that we talked about. One of them we were talking about some of the noise feedback, and just just as a sidebar on on some of the noise feedback was. Um, you know, we noticed on a national basis that there was a lot more noise complaints with COVID because everyone was home. Um, and so there was a lot more people who were trying to work from home. They were, you know, they're in, you know, less insulated buildings and, and, you know, and trying to do Zoom meetings and stuff like that. And they're also just there to sleep and they start to notice the noise more. Um, some of our noise, you know, I know there was a lot of discussion about the jet noise, like the university, but a lot of the complaints that we'd gotten to was centered around what we believe is probably the state patrol where they hit the, where the interstate, where the cars slow down as they come into town, you know, the state patrol would hover there for three hours at a time circling, which is usually during the time periods that people were gone to work. Well, now they're, a lot of people were home, you know? Um, so it's hard to know how that could affect it. Now people are going to going back to work. And, um, <clears throat> and then also we're seeing on the, like the national level jet demand was or, you know, just flight demand was through the roof up 30, 40% last year and a half to two years. Um, but we're seeing that definitely normalize, you know, we're back down the last quarter of last year was down probably 10%. <clears throat> and it, like I say, it's not alarming because it's approaching normal. Uh, it was a bit overwhelming, um, but I'm, I'm expecting that to ease up a little bit or continue to ease through 2023. Um, uh, then the other comments on the terminal building and private funding, I just wanted to mention when we did fly Iowa, we had a very difficult time getting local funding to help with that. Whereas I know a lot of other communities had a, had good opportunities for that. Um, you know, like Monticello, for example, for their terminal, but also just other communities. It seems like in Iowa city, there's a lot of really, really, really good causes to give to, uh, that are sometimes, you know, more public facing than the airport in terms of, you know, the, the hospital and children's hospital and stuff like that. But, but, um, but I do know that Ames specifically, they had a really strong support from Iowa state uh, to the point where I had heard that potentially Iowa state might've even backed the loan for the, for the terminal building to a certain degree and, and had some forgivable portions and different things like that. And, and in return had, they've got signage inside the terminal building and stuff. Um, so there's definitely avenues to go. I don't want to poo-poo the idea other than just, I was, I remember being kind of disappointed when I called around to people who used the airport and find out a lot of them were, you know, significantly, you know, they had pretty well targets for where they were given their funds and stuff like that. 
um, within the community. But yeah. um, anyway, other than that, that, that's pretty much. Oh, then the other thing that Mike had mentioned on on uh, jet air hangar expansion discussions, uh, you know, that's something that we've been definitely talking about, and hopefully within the next month we'll have a little bit better idea of some potential things to discuss at the commission level of what that might look like. So anyway, that's all that I've got. Unless anybody has any questions for me. No, thank you. Thank thanks, you, Matt. Matt. Yep. Thanks guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Before thanks, we move forward, I have a question. I'm still stuck on the events. We're trying to increase visibility with the community. Is there a way that we can sponsor one of the movies? For a price. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can sponsor a lot of things for a price, but we really don't have that the, much. Exactly. Yeah. But do we have the money to do it, though? Uh, um, I'd have to look and see what the sponsorship levels are, what they're costing are, because that's not generally something I entertain, um, just because they do run usually several thousand dollars. Um, yeah, I think what was nice about these, especially during COVID, is uh, that there weren't a lot of other good venues, and this was, it kind of fit that collaboration mm -hmm. with the city piece. It was, you know, very little, uh, you know, very little trouble on our part yeah. to host, and it just was a big win win. But I think now what I'm hearing is the city's kind of pulling back on some of those things. Well, yeah, it's it's the Summer of the Arts Group, so it's its, its own nonprofit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, they're, yeah, they're their own, and they do, so, I mean, they literally do most of the downtown events, so the Jazz Fest and the Arts Fest and um, all of that stuff is under that umbrella. The movies are under that umbrella. Are they going to continue the same number of movies? Um, I didn't get that impression, but that wasn't a question I asked. I was more focused on, well, if you're going to cut back, I would really like to have one here. How do I do that? And, and offering to pay for the the, the Porta John's was uh, something that worked out. And that's going to be a couple hundred bucks because you know, I, I know that from previous uh, rentals from events. They're they're pretty cheap. And... Have you been here when that movies are happening? Have anybody attended any of the events? I've, I've been in the area and driven by, but I haven't attended one. Um, but they get they're... around 75 people or so. Um, so part, part of the pro part of the problem is it, it's a it's a confined space and mm -hmm. um, they they still have pre registration for the movies because they have a limited number of spots that you can reasonably access. They were often you know not sold out because free but reserved out yeah. I guess you'd say. Uh, and Mike, is, if you find out a, a specific dollar amount, I think I mean we'd Jed be willing to to either sponsor one or partner dollar for dollar or whatever take to help do it because i think that's a relatively simple one from a you know from our standpoint i mean we mow the grass out there it's they do a really good job of kind of setting up on their own and it's, yeah. you know it's well, it's one of the events i'd like to get behind because it's a it's an easy win <laughs> for, <laughs> with, without a lot of a lot of personnel expense so well, let's let's plan on reaching out to lisa and, and we'll we'll have that conversation so the plan you're thinking is you'd still have some of the uh whatever the arts what was the group that does some of the, summer arts? Of the arts. arts you still have them like manage it but we would help yeah it. yeah and that's yeah i would do that yeah yeah absolutely. i think let them yeah let them continue to do what they've been doing right. for the last Three years, right? Yeah. And not get in business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I want zero management of it. We just, if, if it's a check we need to write, or if it's uh, they send an uh, send us an invoice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Thank you for checking. So, uh, commission member reports. Everybody will be here next meeting. I think so. Mm, yeah. February 9th. Yeah, February 9th. Yeah, so uh, as we deferred our, our uh, art discussion, next meeting in that meeting, do you want to, instead of having a special meeting, do you yeah. want to just yes. hold over and, for the art? Yeah, for the art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm a maybe for that, that date. That's my wife's birthday. We haven't really mm -hmm. figured out what we're doing, if anything. Um, so I'm a maybe, but 
Uh, I'm happy to do either one. One, two, that's three weeks. Yeah. yeah. I'm so, around. Uh, I'll be here. Yeah. I'm around. I'll be here. Well, I mean, don't need you for a quorum, but if. Uh, no. But maybe, well, you could also leave your thoughts with Mike yeah. and yeah, he can. If I could bring your wife for her birthday, she could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if we had a restaurant, you could have bring Yeah, I know. Right? We don't have one. So <laughs> now, tell me you're optimized. I was yeah. first mission <laughs> star right. right here in the air. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is February 9th, we'll do the art discussion. I'll finish that up. I'll yeah. I'll let Wendy know that that was the decision so she can communicate with the artists again and let them know that that's when. Um, yeah, it, it's they were all good. They were, um, and they would all do a great job. I think. They, I think so. Yeah. Can we do three builders? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say we've got three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have. I have some ideas. I was. I was certainly impressed with some more than others. Same. But they would all do a great job. They would all do a great job. That's, that was my thought too. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a no lose situation. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it's a you know embarrassment of riches. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Judy, no comments? Okay. Anything? All right, Judy, hope you feel better. <laughs> yeah. Get some rest. Do you move, we adjourn? Report? Any staff report <laughs> before we move to adjourn? Uh, staff report, no, I don't have anything. Um, I... No. Um, I don't know the email the <laughs> Okay, adjourn. Anybody I move move? We adjourn. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.